Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. So continuing our discussion about antibiotics. Today we will be talking about the glycopeptides. Uh, the glycopeptides are also from the cell wall inhibitors and, and the prototype drug for the glycopeptide is the uh, vancomycin which started to be used in the 1953 and we have also the tachoplanin, which started to be used in the 1978, which is 30 years after the vancomycin. And they both, uh, and the only difference between those two drugs is the by the pharmacokinetics. The rest is almost the same for both of them. And in this video, we will be discussing the pharmacokinetics, the mechanism of action, the antibacterial spectrum, the therapeutic uses and the adverse effects of these drugs. So let's start. Uh, now let's talk about the pharmacokinetics of these drugs. So let's start by talking about the administration. So the molecular weight of these drugs is very high. Molecular weight. The vancomycin have molecular weight of around 1,500 and the tachoplanin have molecular weight of 1,700 uh, and to compare them the penicillin is from 300 to 500 while those drugs are 1,500 to 1,700 which is a big difference. Uh, the vancomycin is taken intravenously in general and taken orally only for treatment of the pseudomembranous colitis that is caused by the Clostridium difficile. So, orally only for treatment of pseudomembranous colitis. Pseudomembranous C. difficile. Uh, the tachoplanin is taken intravenously or intramuscularly. Uh, for the distribution, distribution, they both can't cross the blood-brain barrier because of the high molecular weight, so can't cross the blood-brain barrier. And the half-life uh, and the half-life for the vanco, so half-life for the vancomycin is from four to six hours, and for the tachoplanin is from 45 to 70 hours, which allow for daily dosing. Metabolism and excretion of this drug is by of those drugs is by the kidney. So metabolism and excretion by kidney. Uh, now let's talk about the mechanism of action of the vancomycin. So the vancomycin is active on the cell wall cell wall inhibitor so it is active on the cell wall of the bacteria and it is active on the gram positives only active on gram positives only because the gram negatives have the outer membrane that prevent the vancomycin from entering the cell because of the high molecular weight of the vancomycin and it binds into the glycan unit of the cell wall. So the glycan unit, the vanco would bind into those and would make the bacteria can't uh, link them together. So uh, it is the opposite of the penicillin. The penicillin would bind into the transpeptidase enzyme and prevent the bacteria from making the links between the glycan unit. The vancomycin, it binds into the glycan unit itself and prevent the bacteria from identifying the glycan unit. 
and this would lead to the destruction of the cell wall. And subsequently, the uh, bacterial cell would die from the osmotic pressure exerted by the environment. Uh, now let's talk about the antibacterial spectrum of the vancomycin. So the vancomycin is active against the uh, MARSA, the, met the methicillin resistance Staphylococcus aureus, and it's also active against the MARSI, the methicillin resistance Staphylococcus epidermidis. The vancomycin is also active against the Clostridium difficile, which causes the super infections, and it is taken orally to treat this infection uh, because uh, it's a superficial infection of the uh, gastrointestinal tract, and the vancomycin is never absorbed orally, so it would work only superficially, and it's very helpful. And it also work with the enterococcus fascium and fascialis. So enterococcus fascium and fascialis. Those which causes infections like UTIs, endocarditis, and meningitis. So let's talk about the therapeutic uses of the vancomycin. So there are some rules that should be followed while using the vancomycin. The first one is, the, is that vanco, vancomycin is never the first choice. Vancomycin is never first choice to treat infection. First to treat infection. It is usually a second or third. And vancomycin is never given alone. It should be combined with other antibiotics because it is slow in killing the bacteria. So vanco never given alone because it is slow in killing the bacteria and it need help uh, by combining it with something like the gentamicin or maybe uh, cephalosporin it works well. So for the uh, MARSA, which is the methicillin resistance Staphylococcus aureus, we give the vancomycin plus the gentamicin. And for the meningitis that is caused by resistance uh, pneumococcus, meningitis by uh, resistant uh, pneumococci, we give the uh, vancomycin plus ciftriaxone uh, or cefotaxin. Or sometimes we give it with the rifampin. And for the pseudomembranous colitis that's caused by the Clostridium difficile, so pseudo membranous colitis by C difficile. The first choice is the metronidazole, so metronidazole, and if the metronidazole did not work, we transition into the vancomycin oral, vanco oral. Uh, finally, let's talk about the adverse effects of the vancomycin and those are collected in the mnemonic van from vancomycin where the V stands for vein uh, which is thrombophlebitis and this would uh, happen when we injecting the vancomycin into the patient uh, arm or leg and this would lead to severe pain and this is treated by giving the vancomycin over 500 milliliter normal saline over 60 minutes. The A stands for allergy, allergy, and it is caused by the vancomycin stimulating the histamine release, histamine 
release which lead to the patient becoming red which, which is called red man syndrome and this is solved by the same technique by giving the banco over 500 milliliter over 60 minutes the N stand for nephrotoxicity which is the same as the penicillin so nephrotoxicity same as penicillin and with that we reach the end of this video thank you guys for watching and see you next time peace